guys, Tim from BitsAndTokens.com here with Erica Gemma. Give me a, a little background on how you got started in cryptocurrency. Cool. So I was a huge libertarian mm -hmm. when I was younger. I was the youngest delegate in Washington State for Ron Paul. Okay. And so if you look at the early adopters of Bitcoin, most of them are into this like anarchist and liberty movement. And I mean, I think it's really important to tell people that the genesis block of, of the Bitcoin blockchain references the 2008 bailout of the banks, you know? Mm -hmm. So this, this currency is very much a revolutionary stamp in the ground. Right. Um, and so it was through that community that I had first heard about Bitcoin. And at the time I was like 19 years old, you know, like I didn't have any money. I, it was 2011, so I didn't know like how you could actually buy Bitcoin. The inroads weren't even there. Um, and then I kind of forgot about it because Ron Paul lost. And I was like, wow, like I knew that the government was corrupt, but I didn't know the level to which it was corrupt until like I got involved. And then I just saw like all these shady things happen. So I was just like, there's no way that I can make a stamp, like a stamp in the world through government. So I gave up on that. Um, still followed like economics. I always liked aviation. So mm -hmm. I went to Embry Riddle Aeronautical University. Go Eagles, if you guys know <laughs> that school. Um, and afterwards, I started working for a bank uh, in their aircraft leasing division. I had asked this banker, his name is uh, let's not name drop. Sure, it. sure. <laughs> <laughs> but pretty legendary banker sold Bank of America to Merrill Lynch. So did this amazing merger. I asked him on a video conference call with a lot of people what he thought about Bitcoin, and he laughed at me. And everyone in the conference call laughed at me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hmm, this means that there's something to this. Right. So I started looking it up. Um, I was like, wow, like there at, at that time, like Coinbase was up. You know, you were able to buy. Uh, directly through Coinbase and then I just went down the rabbit hole learned a lot about it for myself um, And then I had started working at another aircraft leasing company locally I was telling them about Bitcoin and they Were kind of like laughing at me again, you know, like haha like that's drug money <laughs> Until this whole like blockchain not Bitcoin thing, right, you know swept the nation and Then they started sending me around officially to like these events and these places just to really learn about the blockchain I saw the opportunity and uh, left my company doing some consulting with them now and uh, just s started this Miami International Bitcoin company, which is really focused on bringing mass adoption to Miami, uh, mass adoption of Bitcoin through Miami as like a port. There's a lot of opportunity here. Why Miami? Oh, there's many reasons why Miami. Uh, so first of all, if you look at our population here, we are the door to Latin America, right? Mm -hmm. So we are already the Silicon Valley of Latin America. There's nothing that needs to change. Uh, they say that there, you know, there are business people that say like, oh, I love going to Miami because it's so close to the United States. Like the city here, <laughs> yeah, the city here is very different. And then if you look at people that actually need Bitcoin, it's central and south americans and venezuela is the prime example but it's really mm -hmm. it's really like in america people they don't understand it because we have a currency that's relatively stable <laughs> i mean it's only because they don't understand the federal reserve right, yeah right, right. most people don't because you know we have like a good quality of life but in other countries it's very very necessary and so we have an opportunity here in miami because we're the door mm -hmm. uh, the second reason i would say is because we have a local government that is on board for this i mean i have a video of me and the mayor and he was at my event on monday and i, I talked about that last night but i have a video of me and the mayor and i ask him how long do you think it will take for mass adoption to happen in your city and he said 12 to 18 months. I mean, there's a lot of projects going on like with, with the Miami airport, with the port here, mm -hmm. using blockchain to just really streamline the business processes. So um, first thing, location. Second thing is uh, the government. And then the third thing, I guess an extension of the government is that when you look at the tax laws in the different states, right? There are so many people, people coming out to my event from New York or California because they're just tired of like that huge tax rate we have no state income tax here mm -hmm. and not only that but anywhere you are in this state you're within 60 miles of a beach so it's like we have beautiful weather no tax no state income tax um and then there's a there's just a lot of there's a lot of options like the tech scene is continuing to grow um you're seeing a lot of big players in the city want the tech scene to grow and then there's you know the beacon council in miami there's tax breaks for tech jobs so 
the environment here in terms of like the legislation is just the place to be and plus like it's miami like who doesn't <laughs> want to come to miami no i hear you i hear you um what do you hope to achieve with Miami International Bitcoin? Well, the Bitcoin Center Miami is kind of my main thing right now. Miami mm -hmm. International Bitcoin is actually a meetup group that started in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, just a lot of local people. It turned into a Facebook group. It's a pretty big Facebook group. Now it's a chat room um, online. But the Bitcoin Center Miami, my goal with them is to make Miami the best educated city in the world when it comes to this technology. And so that's providing a lot of free classes. Like just, I want to teach everybody, you know, from mm -hmm. mayors all the way down to like low income people, to like college students, to business owners. This is how you can use Bitcoin. This is how you can use the blockchain in order to revamp your business and, and keep up with the changing times. How often do you do um, those types of classes? So because the Bitcoin Center hasn't opened yet, I haven't had them. Okay. Um, but I, last year I did like, I, did, I do Crypto Mondays. So if you guys know what Crypto Mondays is, it's a pretty global brand. It's 37 different states, like 14 different countries. Mm -hmm. Miami is the 22nd chapter and I opened it up maybe like May of last year. And um, I used to do like one social session where everyone just meets up at a bar, you know, hang out, talk, network. And then I did one educational session every month. So we covered different topics like security tokens. Um, I mean, I had like some, like pe just people come out and and talk and teach. And th that those used to be once a month, but then they just kind of got a little cumbersome. And so once we have the center open, my goal is to have these educational classes once a week. You know? where, where people would be able to like come in and sit down and learn and yep. ask questions and whatnot. Yeah. Wow, I like that. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it's easy. The thing is, is like I go around to a lot of events just to raise awareness, mm -hmm. and everyone asks me afterwards, like, I want to, like, I want to learn about this. Like, I want to learn more, and there just is no option. And if I now that I have a physical location, thanks to wonderful people in the city that want this to happen. Mm -hmm. And then obviously Nick Spanos and like the Bitcoin Center New York brand is just so massive. Uh, there's a lot of traction on it. And so I just think the ability for me to reach my goal, which is to make Miami a, a very well educated city is it's just everything is coming into place. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, how soon do you think you'll have the center open? Well, um, I'm hoping in the next three months, I, it, you know, contractors need to go in and fix some stuff, but there's a lot of interest for people to have office space because that's the goal, right? So it, it'd be office space, event space, educational classes. I mean, definitely trying to, there's a lot of international businesses that are like, okay, where do I put my US space? And I'm trying to convince them to do it in the Bitcoin Center, Miami. Mm. Um, and then also, uh, you know, incubator for projects that come in. We want to be able to help them and be successful. We want to have a media room like this where it's like people are able to just come in and, and record content and, and, you know, contract out people that are able to build it for them without having to do everything from the ground up. Because I feel like this is the problem in crypto is that A, people aren't talking to each other. And so there's a lot of people that can collaborate. It's like, why, you know, build it twice? Right. Yeah. And so there needs to be like one source of information and I would like to be that one place. Okay. Okay. We definitely have similar goals in that regard as far as education and kind of the one-stop shop aspect of it all. Mm -hmm. um, is it more important for you, do you think, educating, let's say, the average Joe or for businesses to be able to integrate? Like, um, is it more important for people to know how to spend Bitcoin or for businesses to know how to accept it? I mean, I think they go hand in hand. You know, one of the projects that I'm working on that I can't talk too much about, but it's, you know allowing businesses to use Bitcoin and not have to pay these, like um, not have to figure out themselves, how do I convert it if I want to convert it? Mm -hmm. You know, and then when it comes to people adopting it, the business, I don't know, it's like who came first, the chicken or the egg, you know? Uh, businesses won't adopt it unless there's people that are actually using it and people won't use it unless the businesses are like, oh, you can use this as a form of payment. So I, I don't know, I think in America we might fall behind just because this is a very luxurious place that doesn't see the need for it, but um, definitely both ends, you know, educating people and then also bringing businesses online. And not only that, but uh, you know, Bitcoin is, is one thing. Bitcoin and blockchain are not synonymous. You know, sometimes right. people think they are and it's just, no, they're not. Uh, I want businesses to be able to use a blockchain because it's, you know, 
when technology upgrades, why wouldn't you use better technology? But it's not the same thing as Bitcoin at all. And people need to know that. Mm -hmm. No, definitely, definitely. Um, you mentioned another project that you weren't really able to talk a lot about. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else going on that you are able to talk about? Um, so one cool thing that's going on is the Florida Blockchain Business Association. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting people in that group. Um, you've got Tampa, Orlando, Miami, um, one more location. And you've got community leaders in each of these places that are all doing something similar to what I'm doing, but really just bringing the community together. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have created this group. It's a 501c6, so we're allowed to lobby. And so one of the things that we're doing is on April 9th, uh, we're doing a blockchain day at the Capitol. And so a bunch of us are driving up there. We're meeting with you know members of the House, members of the Senate, and really just trying to tell them, like, hey, make sure the laws that are you're writing here are in support of blockchain because, you know, otherwise we're going to be a state that falls behind. I mean, they're already passing things like when it comes to money transmitter licenses that are like messing with my business. And um, we have to make sure that we are a voice. Right. Now, I have my stance on regulation. I'm not for it in most industries. Like I, I feel as if, yeah, uh, I, I want the government out of most of it, like a very, very limited government. Mm -hmm. Are you of the same thought yeah, process? Awesome. Okay. That's what libertarianism we're, is. We're gonna we're gonna be friends, me and you. <laughs> we're gonna be great friends. Um, we we discussed it on a previous drunk crypto, where I'm totally just for the government out of most things. Yeah. Healthcare, um, especially blockchain, because it's not something that should be taxed even because mm -hmm. it's not money that was created by the federal reserve mm -hmm. so like even though that's not a government organization like we okay. shouldn't <laughs> that's another story for another day um, <laughs> but um i don't think that if you accept bitcoin like if there's a fee for whatever company you're going through to have them convert it back to usd mm -hmm. you know that's one thing but to be taxed on the actual bitcoin yeah not for that are you no absolutely not i i think that it's why would you tax somebody on selling their own property it's just ridiculous you know you're you're it's just ridiculous i'm hoping that florida doesn't go the same route that new york does with like the bit license and I don't all think those will, hoops but... that you have to jump through just to exist it's not as bad as hawaii but mm -hmm. new york is still pretty bad yeah what's so, going on in hawaii um so the reason why coinbase doesn't operate over there is because for every dollar amount of bitcoin that they sell they have to have a hawaiian bank account set up with that same dollar amount mm -hmm. in it so even if like, let's say I'm Coinbase and I sell you one Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. I would have to have that $4,000 in the bank because the sale occurred. And then if you take the Bitcoin and do whatever with it, irrelevant, like that 4,000 still has to stay Interesting. in the bank. It's really just a way for them to do a money grab because mm -hmm. like they can tax you on like having a bank account and whatnot. Yeah. So hmm. yeah, um, the people of Hawaii really just don't like it. They have to use um, Gemini right now to kind yeah. of buy stuff. I, I mean, I'm a fan of I'm a fan of Kraken, Gemini. I mean, obviously, Coinbase is what I send people because it's the easiest. Right. Unfortunately. I'm not, not unfortunately, but like, it is what it is. They, they serve their purpose and they do a good job at it. But I think right. that um, sometimes, and, and I don't know too much about this, but it's very possible that there are liens on your coins if you buy through Coinbase. And so you think like, you know, you can use like your Wasabi wallet and like mix your stuff up, but you can still have liens on your coins. So we'll see what happens. I think the Wyoming laws are, are really trying to change that. Wyoming is a fantastic place. They recently started beefing with Texas, which I am all for, because um, Texas is kind of trying to go the New York route when it comes to that. Interesting, so. poor Austin. Austin is one of, I would say Austin and Miami right now are vying for this blockchain capital of, of the United States. Mm -hmm. um, and if Texas laws don't support that, that's not good. Yeah, no, Texas is moving in the wrong direction when it comes to blockchain, Bitcoin, any cryptocurrencies in general. So yeah. um, just to see Wyoming of all places throw shade was like one of the highlights of my life. It's 
Caitlin Long. Caitlin Long <laughs> is a beast. Like so. she's she's absolutely a person who's knowledgeable in pushing things forward. Right. And that's that's kind of what you need. Like you just need one person who's like willing to get their hands dirty and deal with the different entities. Um, and you know, actually, the law, one of the lawyers who helped draft the uh, what the laws in Wyoming mm-hmm. just moved to Miami. Really comes to my events. Yeah. Wow. Very very cool people, and that's what I'm saying. Like we just have opportunity here in this city and the local government recognizes that and we're hoping that the state government does too Mm -hmm. so cool um anything else that you wanted to add to the people any upcoming events that you might want let's see upcoming events i really don't have any upcoming events right now um i'm throwing okay oh i know so I don't know if you guys have heard about eToro before. Mm-hmm. Okay, eToro is an incredible platform and they manage over a billion dollars worth of funds outside of the United States. And this is why regulation gets messy, right? Because it just it just really, really restricts innovation. And so you can trade stocks and bonds on eToro traditionally until crypto came along. Mm-hmm. So now you can trade crypto on eToro and it's a social trading platform, which is cool. And what that means is that um, if you make trades, people can follow your trades and you can follow other people's trades and you see their percentage of success and their percentage of failure on certain coins and you can follow them. You can set your profile to automatically set the same trades that they have and then you know set stop losses and stuff like that. And so you're, you can follow some of the top traders. If you, make, if you get gains, then you pay them 2% which is not bad, especially if you're not like, if like myself, like I used to trade a lot, like a lot, but I stopped just be now I just hold, but um, it, it's good for people like that who don't actively want to do it themselves and don't actively want to learn, mm-hmm. but they just want to follow somebody who does a good job, you know, and you're not paying that much, 2% is, I mean, that's, that's a good success fee for people. So if you are a good trader, then you want to also trade on this platform because people will follow you and you can right. make money. But it's cool because uh, eToro has now got licenses in 30 states and two territories in the United States. You can't trade stocks or bonds, but you can trade crypto, which is nice, except they're waiting for their licenses in the state of Florida. So save the date, guys. May 10th, I'm trying to just throw like a big fat launch party for them. Maybe like a big opening um a big opening for the bitcoin center but it's just kind of pending but may 10th right now just save the date not confirmed but i want everyone to come out well i'll definitely pencil that in because that sounds like a it'll be a lot of fun yeah. i actually have used eToro um outside of the united states um vpns gotta VPNs. love <laughs> so you technically you were outside <laughs> listen as far as anyone knows i wasn't here yeah <laughs> so um, yeah, that sounds really cool. Any other events or anything else you wanted to? Um, you know, I had a really big event that I would have promoted. I do Crypto Mondays if, if you guys want to come out. Oh, we meet at American Social. Everyone gets one free drink. Mm. Um, people just come out. I mean, it's interesting because like when there was not, when we were not in the bear market, I had like 80 people coming out standard. And now that we are, I mean, you've, you've got the same names, the same faces coming out, but um Twice a month, American Social in Miami. Follow our meetup page in Crypto Mondays. We just do a little meetup. For sure. Well, what are your website links, your social media, whatever you want the people to know? So, Bank of Erica. And it's so funny because, like, I've always used the username, like, Bank of Erica, Mm -hmm. because I just thought it was funny. And I was like, you know, Bank of America, Bank of Erica, play on words. And now my thing is I teach people the importance of being your own bank, of, you know, holding your own private keys and like not letting a third party be able to shut you down for whatever reason. Funny how the universe works like that. (laughs) Yeah. So So Bank of America, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, um, Steam it, even though I don't post anything on Steam it and YouTube. So hopefully I can have some content soon on YouTube. Oh, we we can definitely help you out with that part. Yeah. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Cool. Thanks. Thanks.